so disappointed you're the what? first person to not fall for this oh welcome to soul and tonic my name is steven and this is my <laughs> friend jennifer <laughs> and uh so far i've always started off with this and everyone just like follows you ah you didn't do it because you're a rebel i really am <laughs> i am i am so true i was like i know he's doing something and i'm just gonna sit here and watch <laughs> <laughs> because he expects me to do something, so I'm going to do nothing and see what happens. <laughs> oh, man. And I feel like that is, uh, I kind of feel like, and I may, be, I may be off base on saying this, but I feel like the gen I knew 14 years ago, very different. <laughs> oh, so different. Oh, so different. Also, um, doesn't go by gen anymore. Oh my goodness. I know. I go by Jennifer. Just like the full Jennifer? Yeah. Yeah. You don't go by Occasionally like... I'll let people call me Jay just because they're like, I have to shorten your name. I'm like, well, you don't have to, but <laughs> it's either Jennifer or Jay. And like they try Jay and I like never answer to it. So, you know. I, well, I'm the opposite. I've just gotten to the point where I just respond to whatever people say because people are going to say my name wrong no matter what I do. Um, oh, no. So like, they, so oh, like, they say uh, your name wrong. Your name is easy. It's Steven. well, I, yeah, but like some people, like if they don't hear it before they see it, they'll just start calling me Stefan. And so I have people who have just like in their mind, I am Stefan. Um, also, when I went to Italy in college, there was a person in Italy who, uh, uh, Sam Spatola. He yeah. always referred to me as Jonathan. <laughs> No matter how many times I corrected him or any of anybody else corrected him, I was always Jonathan. In fact, when he came to visit the college, like a year later, I ran into him and the, he immediately <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, I, 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 it's just going to be wrong. Um, and one of the things I was actually dealing with recently was like I was thinking about actually just going ahead and switching over. In pronunciation because I'm like I don't know it sounds to me it's it's you know it's closer to the original language to the Greek and I like that and I also like the uh, like my middle name is Dwayne but it's D-E-W-A-N-E -E. so it kind of looks like my name looks like phonetically speaking Stefan Dewan and I'm like that sounds kind of cool I kind of like that I might try and do that uh, and then I realized that this, no matter how I pronounce it, people always spell it wrong. So people will spell my name with a V instead of a PH. They'll spell my last name with an uh, E at the end, even though that's wrong. And when I tried, I, I went into Starbucks and I introduced myself as Stefan. The cup came out S-T-E-F. And I'm like, okay, well, I give up. <laughs> I just, I give up. And yeah. I, I don't even know why we even have a PH deal thing anymore because i'm like we have a letter for that you know like if we're going to go with the f sound we have a letter for that you want to go with the b sound we have a letter for that <laughs> so like why do we even have this stupid weird thing oh, like i don't know weird. it's i mean my weird. own family can't spell my name right I, I get it there's a letter missing but like you've known me my whole life why can't you spell my name right like oh well that is weird because I remember because I because I remember like in many times I've like tried to message you and I put in two ends and I couldn't find you and so I've taught I've taught myself like it's only one it is one end <laughs> like no more than that's that what happens that's when you grow up without Facebook and Instagram you just don't know how to spell apparently like <laughs> all my family didn't have that to remind them how to spell my name <laughs> well allegedly um my dad thought his name was Steve, legally, just Steve, his entire life, until he got married and received his birth certificate and discovered his name was actually Stephen. And because everyone just always called him Steve, and he just always, you know, wrote it out, spelled it that way, and then yeah. found out that legally his name is actually different. So, That's I mean, not that much different, but still different. Right. So. Crazy. Names are mm. crazy. All right, I have to know, what are you drinking? Because you've got two different things going on over there. Oh, 
Okay. Well, I do have a I do have a couple things going on here. So here, I have a lovely tea. tea. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's called Black Moon Tea. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a loose leaf combination of Earl Grey, coriander, lavender, and uh, a couple other things. <laughs> uh, so I mean, Tastes it's good. it's Small really letters. good. It's really yeah. really good. Um, yeah, just super great. This is uh, Seagram Extra Dry Gin Neat. Nice. Nice. I like those. What do you have? What was that thing I saw? I have a watermelon margarita. I want that. <laughs> it's very I, good. I very love dangerous. Because it's oh, so yeah. good. And then it just tastes you and you're like, oh no, what happened? <laughs> Just like and water. Side swipe. I drink water every like all day every day. So you've had a lot of life changes. So like just in the time that I've met you, mm. like I've known you. The time that I've known yeah. you, you have been on a journey. <laughs> you have been that on is, a journey. Yeah. Uh and I feel I mean, like every major change i've seen has coincided with some sort of big move you've gone in you know you were in africa for a while you were you know you i mean you're not even you're from canada came down here went over to arizona I, i'm half and place. half let's put that on the record okay i'm half american half canadian but i am fully american now because i got no ties to canada anymore and that's what i'm going to talk about we're just putting that on the record well, congrats. Tell all my secrets for the internet. <laughs> well, I mean, I could just like not. No. Because <laughs> you know way too much. Yeah, okay, keep going. Sorry, continue. Tell me about my life. No, I mean, like, you've had, I mean, you just, you've been all over the place. And yeah. every time you move somewhere else, every time you go somewhere else, I feel like you really, more than most people I know who travel make the most of it. Like, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, like, actually letting the experience affect you and, and like, and change your perspective. Absolutely. And so, like, what does that look like for you right now? Like, where are you at with that? Like, what is, uh, what is Jennifer's life right now? Uh, well, I just got back from eight months in Alaska. Um, I did not mean to go to Alaska. I actually thought I was moving to L.A. So okay. that's different. Um, Those are yeah. very different things. <laughs> so different, like different climate, different culture. Like I, when I was moving to LA, it was like I, I was ready for Hollywood. I was ready to do the film thing. Um, but, but as I was getting ready to move, I thought, well, I have a work from home job. Um, wouldn't it be cool if I took the opportunity to just travel the country a bit? Um, and one of the states that came up was Alaska. And my best friend, God love her, she was like, I'm sorry, you want to go over there. I have known you for how many years? And you have always said I will never, ever, 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 ever go back to the cold. Because I grew up in Canada, because Canada is not like, because I hate being cold. Um, so when I said, I was like, but it's September, like I can go to Alaska in September, no big deal. Two weeks in, it snowed. And I was like, I put my foot in the snow and I cried. And I thought, well, that's not normal. <laughs> oh no. Um, and so like talking about like really like digging in is I was like, there's something here. There's some kind of trauma connected to seeing and feeling and experiencing snowy cold weather um mm. and so when someone offered me their house for the winter just free they were like we're going to arizona which i thought was ironic <laughs> um we're going to arizona <laughs> for the winter do you no want way. to stay in alaska for the winter i was like i feel like i need to do this because like for me i always want to be growing i always want to be learning about myself and and if there's something that's there that I feel like um, needs to be addressed um, and, and maybe um, work through, because I don't want to say change, because like you can't change your trauma, but you can process it and move through it to the other side of it. Um, 
I just realized that there was trauma connected to snow and cold. And so let me take this opportunity to move through it, which is sounds ridiculous. Everyone's like, you went like, literally I ended up in Alaska for the winter spring came in Alaska and I moved back to Arizona, which is like, it's a, it was 104 today and it's 68 in Alaska. Everyone's like, how, why did you do that? Like most people are the opposite, but I just like, I really like hot weather. So I love summers in Arizona. They are my favorite. Actually, I love all year in Arizona, but going back to what you were saying, like I stayed in Alaska because there was stuff I needed to work on. Um, and so it's really funny because a, a lot of people will come up, people I don't even know who are like, oh my gosh, Alaska looks like so much fun. Cause like I was posting the Northern lights and like, I went to a hot springs in like the dead uh-huh. winter and they're like, I'm like this lady, I don't even know. I'm like, it was an experience. Like, cause I, I don't know this person. I don't need to share my life story with her unless she wants to know more than I'm happy. Like, you know me, I'm an open book. Um, Oh, sure. But I, I didn't want to, like, blast on social media. I effing hate Alaska. My Alaskan friends already knew I hated it, and I don't know why they still loved me, because I was so miserable. <laughs> um, but they just, and that was the thing. But, the, like, the really good friend was super texting me with me. And they didn't even know me. But, like, I showed up, and they're like, cool, here's another dancer, and, like, let's just, like, welcome her into the community, and um, I just, I, I really think that wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever season of life you're in, you need to be there and be present and dig into it and figure out like, you know, like, is this who I am? Because this is an opportunity for you to take a look at yourself and say, is who I was in that last city that I was living in working for me? Is that who I actually am? Because a lot of times, like, who I was in the place before I moved somewhere was, was a very much a real version of myself, but it wasn't the full version of me. And I'm still growing and learning and becoming that version of me. Um, but by, by saying like, this is a fresh start, I get to evaluate everything that I have been doing and operating within the mindset, um, the habits, all of those things. And I get to rewrite that. Um, and, and rewire my brain. Like I have a counselor and she was like, well, you're not like, you're not, you're not changing. You're rewriting, you're mm. rewiring, which is a change in and of itself. It's just, it just, it just puts it a little differently, you know? Sure. Um, I just love that perspective of I'm in a new season and a new place. So let me rewire some old bad habits, some old mental, uh, like messages in my brain, um, and, and become closer to that person that I, I already am. I already am this amazing kick-ass woman. Oh, can I say that online? Um, like, I don't know, it might bleep us out. <laughs> but no, like, I think you're fine. This is, I, I, I mean, I just mark everything explicit. It's fine. Nice. So okay. what the hell you want to say? I don't no care. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so like, I just, I just think that's super important. So if I'm going to be somewhere, I'm going to be somewhere new, like, let me get one step closer to this fully authentic version of myself. That was a long answer to a very short question. Uh, that was a beautiful answer. So, I mean, okay, so, okay. Uh, let's unpack that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, Northern Lights and Hot Springs are a bucket list for me. But yeah. you took a step in the snow, mm-hmm. started crying, felt the trauma bubbling yeah. up and then said, I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to yeah. stay in it for a while. This was not like you had to stay here. You, you no. chose. Mm-hmm. Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's very I, different. No, gosh, I love you. I love you so much. Oh, <laughs> that is, that is an absolutely beautiful. I, I, I just like, I don't even know how to like, describe that because i mean it, it's difficult for people to sit in their emotions and in their i mean like i've been thinking about how many times like uh, among the people we know and even ourselves where we've tried uh well i don't want to speak for both of us i know i have like run away from oh, yeah. my my trauma my emotional experiences and mm-hmm. and then when i reach those places of awareness 
to where I've had to say, okay, I'm going to sit in this for a while. And, and those are, those are not easy moments. Those are like, like super soul bearing, like through the fires of purgatory experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you said, I'll do this for months (laughs) in a a place I I'm not from, I, that I didn't expect to be here. You weren't even, I, I, you didn't even pack for that long of a trip. No, no. So. I thought I was going to be there for maybe two weeks to a month. Maybe two months tops. Like, and literally every day it was like, I want to get the fuck out of here. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go home. I want to go to Arizona. Which is funny because, like, again, like, California was my destination. I was going to be a Cali girl. All of these <laughs> things. Uh, which I'm not, I mean, you know me, like, I I'm even the new version, like this fully authentic me is not really a Cali girl, but I'm not really, like, I don't really fit anywhere. Like you said it really well. I'm a rebel. Like I show up and I'm like, cool, let me learn the culture and let me show you like a different way. Like this is me. Let me take, I actually had a counselor say that once. She's like, you like, you like take the box that people are like, here, I want you to fit in this. And you like pick it up and you smash it. And you're like, no, she's like, you you're a cat she called me a category breaker um and i I freaking love it like that stuck with me i was like yeah like tell tell me what to do and i will show you a different way that's probably better or more authentic to who i am because i grew up in this culture where i had to be what everyone else wanted me to be i thought i had to be that's what i was raised to do that's what my brain was wired to believe i had to do and I finally hit that point where I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm miserable. I was, see, when I was so miserable, like, I, I was chronically ill. I had a doctor, a specialist who was like, I need you to please, please, please start experiencing emotions. I was like, what do you mean? It's literally making you sick. The reason you are in pain, I was in my 30s, like early 30s. I mean, I'm still early 30s, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like 31 and I had chronic illness and I almost died multiple times and because my body had held on to all the emotions and I had no way of like, like oh man I didn't I didn't have the tool experience it and let it out and sit and move through it um and so like now I'm at that point where I'm like no like if this is what is coming to the surface like I might be, I'm not going to say I'm perfect about it and just sit there. I'm like, all right, let's do this thing. Like, no, I like look at it and I'm like, oh, this is going to hurt like hell. Um, and I need to like, I know that I, I know what, I know that I don't know what I'm about to walk into and I know it's going to hurt in ways I don't understand even now. Um, yeah. So I have to, I like, it takes time before I consciously decide and it's a constant battle of like, I want, like, I did it in Alaska, like, every day I was texting, I want to leave, I want to leave, I want to leave, I want to leave, and then she'd be like, okay, then come home, and I'm like, but I can't, because I'm not done, like, I'm not done rooting out whatever the fuck this thing is, and it hurts so damn much, but, like, I had this coach who, she talked about, um, you, like, move through the fear, um, and she, like, working with Joe changed my life, um, and, and it actually helped me overcome so much of my chronic illnesses because when I did this program with her, um, it's actually a program that she's an acting coach. And so Mm -hmm. my health coach is an actor and he, um, he had been posting about this program with Joe Kelly and all the things. And I was like, that's cool. Um, sounds like something I need to do, but like, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't want to, and then the doctor was like, I really need you to feel the emotions. Um, Joe did a free, like, this is what the program is, like, 15-minute thing. And I, like, was laying in the doctor's office, and she looked at me and said, you've got to start feeling things. And immediately I was like, well, then, fuck, I have to do Joe Kelly's program. And it was 30 days of intent. It was, I almost threw up so many times. Which, oh if God. you understand the way the body works, like, nausea is a very real response to like release your body is releasing the trauma as it throws up and um or or even that sensation of wanting to throw up um and so um i did this 30 it's called the 30 day reset journey and um Mm. the whole time joe was like yeah oh it's amazing i like everyone should do it and that, like, I wasn't an actress yet, and I mean, I'm still not yet, um, and I'm not in 
um, I'm not in Hollywood like I planned, but 30 days with Joe doing this program. And I, w- I was working a night shift, so it was a 12-hour overnight shift. In the middle of my shift, I would be taking breaks, and I would do, do this, like, 30-minute, hour-long class. I had exercises I had to do every day, and you had to be consistent to, like, get get to that point of freedom. Um, yeah. But on the, the whole way through, she was like, you're afraid. You don't want to do this because you're afraid. On the other side of fear is this sticky deliciousness. you got to move through the sticky to get to the delicious. So mm. when I put my foot in the snow, I was afraid. And then immediately I thought on the other side of this fear, there is sticky. There's through the fear, there's stickiness and it's delicious. And when I get to the other side of it, it will be delicious. And I, and I will be a better human being, a better version of myself. I do this and so that's why I stayed um I, like I'm still like I, I talk about it lately we're like I'm recovering from Alaska because there was so much trauma um that like brought to the surface and I did I didn't do it the okay there is no correct or incorrect way I chose to do it without counseling I would not mm. recommend that to anybody um yep. because I'm now in counseling because I was like oh my gosh like eight <laughs> months brought up all this shit and I'm dealing with it still and I really wish I wasn't um but at that season that's where I was at as I was like I'm just I'm gonna do it alone like um, that. not a good idea don't anybody do that <laughs> but now I'm in counseling and I have this counselor and she's just amazing I'm able to I'm, I'm learning to step outside again and be like all right let's like let me look at this oh like oh I am stepping outside of myself and my body how do I enter it how do I enter into my feelings? How do I find that fear mm, and yeah. the stickiness and move through it? Because there's such deliciousness on the other side of freedom. Like I've tasted it. I've lived in it. It is such a beautiful thing. And I, I lost a lot of that living in Alaska because I just got so wrapped up in the fact that there was trauma and like trying to figure out the trauma and all this stuff um, that now I'm very much back. I feel like I've regressed in some ways in the sense that like, before I went to Alaska, I loved myself fully. I, like, thought I had a rocking body. Like, I loved everything about my – even the things I didn't like about myself, I freaking loved myself. And I'm not quite there yet, again, because I went back and I, I went through all this shit. Um, yeah. But the cool thing is, like, I know now, like, this is that mindset. And I know that there's fear, and I, I'm actually going to get to process it this time mm. because I have the tools. Before, I didn't have the tools. I didn't know anything. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop talking for a second, take a drink, because I just talked a lot. Okay, so, yeah, first of all, I absolutely 110,000% recommend therapy for everybody. I've been going, you know, I've been doing therapy, and I've just, it's not always easy, and there's days where I'm like, why am I doing this? And But uh, every single time I come out of a session, I'm like, oh, yeah, I needed that. I needed to discuss these things. I need to unpack all of this stuff and and the, having somebody there to hear you speak and help you with it without judgment without bias without anything else just like hear everything you have to say and i uh i had somebody in my family because i had mentioned to somebody in my family that i was doing therapy and they're like oh well is it a christian i'm like that's irrelevant yeah i mean like the, the therapist is, but it doesn't matter because that's yeah. not the point. Like they're there to yeah. be unbiased and unjudgmental. Mm-hmm. Their beliefs and all that stuff has nothing to do Absolutely. with my therapy. And, I, and so I would encourage people to genuinely like find a real therapist who is not going to impose their biases, their beliefs on you, like wherever you come from, just get out there and like find somebody. Cause that, that changed me to be able to have somebody to be able to, to actually hear everything I had to say and then ask the right questions. Yeah. I actually so, don't know if my therapist is a Christian or not. Which, I like, love that. <laughs> can, I know. Like, I mean, can you imagine 16 years ago, the me you knew be saying, like, I don't know what my counselor believes. Like, Mm-mm. no. Like, no. It, was, it was always, like, it had to be this and it had to be that. And, like, like, no, there's no wrong answer. Like, I found a counselor who deals with sexual trauma she deals with emdr she deals with 
relationship abuse. She deals with mental, emotional, spiritual abuse. Like she did, like all those things that I just listed off. Like those are things that I personally have been affected by. Yeah. Um, I've only had two sessions with the woman, and already my life is like, whoa, this is amazing. Like I didn't know that about myself. Why didn't anybody tell me this? Um, or, yes. or <laughs> offer that perspective. Like she's she's just, she's not telling me things about myself. She's like, what if it's this? Like, do you think? Like, oh well, like, yeah. And she creates this space for me to to give the answers to myself. But one of the things she said to me is. Um, Actually, I'm not even going to go into what it was. But the thing that she said, no one had ever said to me before. And it, I had been dealing with, and still I'm dealing with, this this issue. And, and she gave me something that visually, whenever that issue pops up again, I'm able to look at it and say, oh, oh, that's what you are. Oh, I actually don't know how what to do with you because no one ever gave me the tools to do that. Because oh my gosh. I came from an evangelical background where the, this specific issue that I'm struggling with, like I actually have no idea what to do with. So let me just stick it here in this bucket uh, in front of me. And I know, right? Let me stick it here in this bucket in front of me and say, I'm going to put you here and I'm going to deal with you as I can. Gosh. And and that's okay. Like, and I don't care what the hell she believes. Like, yeah. she knows what I believe. She respects what I believe. She doesn't make fun of what I believe. I hell, sometimes even I don't even know what I believe. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going through a rewiring process in in my faith and in my life again because I just moved from Alaska back to Arizona when I thought I'd be in California. Like, that's a lot. And, oh, yeah. and to her, it's like like of course you don't know this specific thing no one ever gave you the tool or the capacity for it and so now i have this thing where i'm able to say i don't have capacity because no one gave me the tools i'm gonna learn for myself what tools i need what capacity i need to create what space i need to create in my life i don't have that yet so let me just make a bucket outside of myself and put it right here and Uh as i need it i will come to it and I will, I will, hmm. I will pull what's in that bucket. The things in the bucket are good. Like they're very good things. I just don't know how to receive them right now. And, and I don't have capacity because no one gave me that. No one taught me how to create space for that. And so I, as I learn to create space for that, I pull some of it in and I, and I bring it into myself and who I am and I receive it as I need it. Yep. This woman though, who I, I don't know what she, care what she believes because she just changed my life i was sitting here like a person who was like something is wrong with me i'm broken and she's like you're not broken you just don't have what you need to receive that to to process this thing that you're going through and that's okay so let's learn how to do it and let's do it together like who cares what the fuck she believes (laughs) oh man and and also just like having that outside source to give you more options Absolutely. right because like yeah. i mean i grew up evangelical as well we you know we went to the same very evangelical school yeah. uh same evangelical friends and we had this uh, you know a lot of overlap there in terms of what we went through and it's mm-hmm. like there were so many things i wasn't able to process because no one gave me permission to process them uh, you know so- and because like uh, you I grew up in a, a culture that very much set hardcore dichotomies of it's either this or it's that, you know? Yeah. And it's like, and this is good and this is bad. So you want this period yeah. and there's no room for questioning. And, and to be able to just say like, no, no, fuck that shit. Like, let's look at the big picture here. And when I had, and I've had a couple of therapists. I, you know, I had one when I was living in Roanoke, and then I have the one I have now, who both of them were able to kind of just step in and say, "Have you considered this?" Or, yeah. you know, that sounds kind of like this other thing. Tell me more, and giving me that space to actually have other possible options was like yeah. eye-opening, and yeah. also made me very aware of just how constricted 
I had been in my former like uh, faith, you know, place. Because like the thing is, is like even with like changing things or like whatever, I've had people tell me this is what you are, this is what you are, this is what you are, uh, and this is what you're not. And in terms of that, it's like I've had so many people who have gone out of their way to make sure that I knew that they believed I wasn't a Christian or that I'm not following God's will or whatever. But I'm like, you don't know two shits about my life or who I yeah. am or what I do. And oh, yeah. uh, you heard that I was like asking questions about this one theological thing. And now you've, you've condemned me. And who the fuck are you to tell me what I don't and believe? Like, oh, they, don't, they don't get space for that. No. no, absolutely not. My own brother told me, my own brother, to my face, Ooh, the southern just came out and I'm like broke up. Mm. <laughs> my own brother told me to my face that I was not a good Christian because I wouldn't do what my mother told me. And I was 32 years old. I'm 30, sorry? 32 years old. 32 years old. I have not lived at home since I was 17. Even, I mean, I, I moved out when I was 16 and I moved back in when I was for like a year. Yeah. But mentally, I have been not in that house since I was 16. Physically, it was back and forth for about a year and a half. Um, That's half of your life. You're out. Yeah. And you're going to sit there and tell me that I don't love Jesus because I won't do what mommy tells me to do. Which, by the way, I had, and, and this is like, I, I want to be very careful not to throw the baby out with the bathroom. Because sure. I've had some very good um, experiences with evangelicals, mm-hmm. and I've had most of them have been shit, but I've had a lot of really good ones. And a lot of people who knew this situation with my brother and my and my mom and my sister, they were like, like, leave your family alone, like that shit, like don't listen to them, don't like. And they actually told me this thing your mom wants you to do, don't do it. Yeah. Like you are literally walking into an abusive situation. Do not go, do not do what they are asking. And that boy who is four years younger than me had the nerve to sit next to me in a car and preach at me and tell me I didn't love Jesus because I wouldn't do what mommy said. And I asked Uh, him later, he was like quoting chapter and verse at me. And I was like, hey, after the conversation, I was like, hey, can you just like, Tell me, I want to write those chapters and verse them because, I mean, for our education, one of the things that we were taught that I still very much hold dearly to is like, take yeah. what a person says, if they're quoting scripture at you, you go back to the Bible and you'd be like, all right, what was the context? Like, what was yes. it in the original language? What was this? What was that? And like, and you analyze it to see if the person was right or not. And, and yes. I, I asked him, I was like, hey, like, can you tell me what those scriptures were? The boy could not even tell me what it was. Mm. And I was like, what? He's like, well, I'll have to look it up again. And I thought, mm. oh, you flew all the way from Australia. You wrote a sermon. You memorized a sermon. You spit and vomited your sermon out mm. on me. And then when I came back and I asked you a question, which you and I were taught to do, we were taught to ask questions we weren't taught to like and like explode all over people we were taught to be like hey like you said said this like can you tell me that again so i can like just i I don't fully understand let me go back to scripture and figure this out a little bit on my own i don't need you feeding me you know like and we don't say that but in our heads it's i want to go back and figure this out for myself the boy memorized a fucking sermon and when i went back and i said can you get literally it was like 10 minutes later because he had done it in the car and we got to where we were going I'm like hey before we walk in tell me what those scriptures were again but so that i can just look them up later and he's like i don't know i'll have to look them up that was his response hello everyone i hope you're really enjoying this conversation that i had with jennifer we were having a blast and completely lost track of time so i have divided up this conversation into multiple episodes Uh, So please stick around. We are going to have more of this conversation coming down the line. Uh, Feel free to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss the rest of this conversation. And if you have something that has been sparked from this so far, feel free to leave a comment. Let us know your story. If you're not liking this, go ahead and dislike it as well. Just kind of give us some feedback. Let us know your thoughts on this whole topic. And until next time, feel free to go and follow Jennifer 
over on her social medias, I believe on Instagram, she is strictly known as Authentically Jennifer. That's Authentically Jennifer with one N in Jennifer. If you've put in two N's, you're not going to find her. <laughs> uh, so until next time, remember that life is short and there is but little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. We'll see you soon.